Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I'm Anuja Kumar and with me is VC Pramod with the Midday News. The headlines. COVID-19 recovery rate reaches 76.30%. Number of patients recovered three and a half times more than the active cases in the country. JEE main and NEET UG exams to be held as per schedule in September. Number of examination centers increased. Government makes use of fast tag mandatory for availing any discount in toll charges. IMD forecasts heavy rainfall in east, north and central India during next 5 days. And England pacer James Anderson became the first fast bowler in history to take 600 test wickets. The number of patients recovered from COVID-19 in the country has almost reached three and a half times the number of active cases. India has registered more than 100% hike in the recoveries in the last 25 days. The recovery rate continues its upward trend and has reached 76.30% today. With sustained, preemptive and timely interventions, over 24,67,000 people in the country have successfully recovered from COVID-19 so far, along with recovery of over 63,000 patients in the last 24 hours. The Health Ministry has informed out of the total active corona cases in the country, only 0.29% are on ventilators, whereas nearly 2% of the total patients are in the ICU. The case fatality rate also continues to show steady decline and now stands at 1.84%. Nearly 30 states and union territories in the country have even lower fatality rate than the national average. The health ministry said that over 67,000 new cases of COVID-19 have been registered in the country in the last 24 hours, taking the cumulative figure at 32,34,475. Presently, the total number of active corona cases in the country is 7,7267. In a single day, 1,059 deaths have also been reported, taking the toll to 59,449. India is continuously stepping up its COVID testing capacity. In the last 24 hours, more than 8,20,000 samples were tested, taking the cumulative testing numbers till date to over 3 crore 76 lakh 51,000. The positivity rate continues to record a decline despite increased testing and stands at a weekly average of around 8% of the total samples tested. Tests done per million of the population in the country has also scaled a new peak of being over 26,000. The Union Health Ministry informed that the remarkable feat has been achieved by rigorously following the test, track and treat strategy. ICMR said that the indigenous production of testing kits in the country has brought down the cost incurred on single RT-PCR tests from around 2,000 rupees to nearly 300 rupees. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal today said COVID-19 testing will be doubled in the coming days and 40,000 tests will be conducted per day in the national capital next week. Briefing media in New Delhi, Mr. Kejriwal said there has been a slight increase in COVID-19 cases in the last few days. In the last 24 hours, 1,693 new COVID cases have been reported in Delhi. He said the recovery rate is more than 90% in the national capital. The Chief Minister added that there are a total of 14,100 130 COVID beds and 10,448 of these are vacant. In Mizoram, 14 more coronavirus cases have been detected and three patients were discharged after recovery in the past 24 hours. With this, the total number of COVID-19 cases has reached 967 in the state. According to the official statement, so far 464 patients have been discharged after recovery while 503 patients are undergoing treatment. In Assam, Barak Wali has been put under strict lockdown due to uh, the alarming situation of COVID-19. Here is a report from our correspondent. In a view to contain the outbreak of COVID-19, all the three district disaster management authorities in Barak Valley have issued separate orders to restrict activities. This lockdown will begin tomorrow early morning and will continue till midnight of 4th September. 
while only pharmacies will be allowed to function in urban areas stand alone shops are being permitted to run in rural areas during lockdown essential services will remain uninterrupted a rise in number of covid-19 cases have been recorded in the valley for last few months despite enforcing weekend lockdown the valley has witnessed around 10000 covid positive cases with almost 50% recovery however 50 people died due to covid in the valley till now it is patak ai news silchar the ut of jnk yesterday reported 701 fresh cases of covid-19 pandemic taking the total number of positive cases to 33776 including 26363 from kashmir and 7413 from jammu division aia jammu correspondent reports that the ut also recorded another spike in covid deaths yesterday as the deadly virus claimed 19 lives the death toll has mounted to 654 in the ut while the death toll in kashmir valley alone has crossed the 600 mark Haryana Agriculture Minister Jay Prakash Dalal today tested positive for COVID-19. The development came when Haryana Assembly monsoon session was going to start today afternoon. Mr. Dalal in a post on his official Facebook page said that he has quarantined himself at his home. He said 3 days ago he was tested negative for COVID-19 but the second test has come positive. He has requested all those who have come in contact with him during last few days to isolate and get tested as a precaution. cautionary measure Haryana Chief Minister Manohar Lal Speaker Gyan Chand Gupta and three legislators have tested positive so far apart from Agriculture Minister Dalal In Madhya Pradesh the number of COVID-19 cases has surged to 55,695 after 1,374 new cases were reported in the past 24 hours with 19 patients succumbing to the infection the death toll rose to 1,263 As per the state health bulletin 1074 coronavirus patients were discharged from the hospitals in the past 24 hours taking the number of recovered cases in the state to 42247 there are now 12185 active cases in madhya pradesh the corona recovery rate in the state has become 75.8% and the fatality rate has come down to 2.29% free corona treatment arrangements have been made in government and private hospitals in the state the recovery rate of bhopal is 81 Indore is 69 percent, Gwalior is 75 percent, and Murena is 94 percent in the state. During the last seven days, the highest 212 daily average cases have been reported in Indore, while daily average cases of Bhopal are 138, Gwalior is 122, and Jawalpur is 109. Sanjeev Sharma, AIA News, Bhopal. In Telangana, surge in the number of COVID-19 cases in the state continues with 3,018 new cases reported in a single day yesterday. This is the highest number of new cases recorded in a single day so far. As per the daily bulletin issued by the state medical and health department this morning, 3,018 new COVID-19 cases have been reported out of over 61,000 samples tested. during the past 24 hours the number of tests conducted in a single day is also the highest so far in the state with this the number of total covid-19 cases reported so far in the state increased to 111688 during the same period 1060 more covid-19 patients recovered and were discharged from various hospitals in the state with this the recovery rate in the state stood at 76.3% and total 85223 people recovered from covid so far Meanwhile 10 more died yesterday due to covid and other comorbidities taking the total covid-19 toll to 780 CGHS has started teleconsultation services from yesterday to facilitate consultations with specialists by CGHS beneficiaries through virtual mode without physically visiting a healthcare facility health ministry has been receiving requests from various quarters including senior citizen beneficiaries to start teleconsultation services with specialist doctors in view of the current covid-19 pandemic initially these services will be available to beneficiaries in delhi ncr the e services are available between 9 am and 12 noon on all working days The teleconsultation services are using the existing e-sanjeevani platform of the health ministry. For ease of use, this platform has been linked with the ID of the beneficiaries. The beneficiaries are required to register on the platform using their mobile number after which an OTP will be generated for verification purposes. After verification, the beneficiaries can log on to the system, fill the patient registration form, request for a token and upload health records if required. 
The patients will receive patient ID and token through SMS and they will also be intimated about their number in the online queue. An e-prescription will be generated after teleconsultation. The patients can get medicines issued from their CGHS wellness center using the e-prescription. World Health Organization has declared Africa free of polio, a landmark in decades-long campaign to eradicate the notorious disease around the world. This was announced by WHO Regional Director of Africa, Dr. Machi Diso Moiti. She described this a historic day for Africa. August 25, 2020 marks a huge day in the history of the fight against polio. After four years without a case of wild polio, the WHO African region has finally been declared free of wild polio virus. The Uttar Pradesh government has ordered a complete ban on organizing any cultural and religious meeting in the state till 30th of September. Additional Chief Secretary Home Avnish Kumar Avasti has issued an order banning all kinds of processions and tableaus. Talking to AIR, Avnish Avasti said the protocol needs to be adhered to at every cost. The assembly of more than five persons at one place has been banned. According to the order, this prohibition has been imposed in the state because it is feared that anti-social elements may try to disturb law and order and communal harmony. However, the order said that people can establish taziyas and alums in their homes and there will be no restriction on this. National Testing Agency, NTA, has substantially increased the number of examination centers for JEE mains and NEET UG exams scheduled to be held next month. In order to meet the social distancing requirements due to COVID-19 pandemic, the number of examination centers have been increased from 570 to 660 in case of G mains and from 2,546 to 3,843 for NEET UG 2000. 2020. Additionally, in case of G mains, the number of shifts have been increased from 8 to 12. Number of candidates per shift has also been reduced from 1,32,000 to 85,000. This year, nearly 8,50,000 candidates have registered for G mains, while the number of registrations for NEET UG has been nearly 16 lakhs. Education Minister Ramesh Pokhrial Nishank said the NTA will conduct the examination taking in account all COVID-19 guidelines and sentiments of the Supreme Court in this regard. हम छात्र के साथ हैं पहले उसकी सुरक्षा उसके बाद उसकी शिक्षा और सुप्रीम कोर्ट का भी हमको सम्मान करना है और उन अभिभावकों को जो अभिभावक लगातार हम पर दबाव बनाए हुए हैं सात लाख पच्चीस हजार छात्रों ने तो कल तक अपना एडमिट कार्ड डाउनलोड कर दिया है तो मुझे निवेदन करना है सभी से कि सुप्रीम कोर्ट की भावनाओं को भी हमको सम्मान करना चाहिए और बच्चों का एक वर्ष खराब न हो in order to ensure proper social distancing inside the examination halls, the candidates will be seated in alternate seats in case of G mains as another precautionary step the number of candidates allowed to take NEET UG test in one room has been reduced from 24 to 12. Calling for racial harmony in the country, the United States First Lady Melania Trump today urged to end the violence and looting being done in the name of justice. Delivering the keynote address of the Republican Convention, Trump said like everyone else, she has reflected on the racial unrest in our country. She said she was not proud of parts of the country's history and encouraged people to focus on the future while still learning from the past. She asserted that Donald Trump is honest and this is what the citizens deserve from the president. She added that he demands action and gets results. Mrs. Trump also expressed compassion for Americans worried about the COVID-19 outbreak, which has killed more than 1.78 lakh Americans. She said her husband's administration is working relentlessly. I want to acknowledge the fact that since March, our lives have changed drastically. The invisible enemy, COVID-19, swept across our beautiful country and impacted all of us. My husband's administration will not stop fighting until there is an effective treatment or vaccine available to everyone. You are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. COVID-19 recovery rate reaches 76.3%. Number of patients recovered three and a half times more than the active cases in the country. JEE main and NEET UG exams to be held as per schedule in September. Number of examination centers increased. 
government makes use of fast tag mandatory for availing any discount in toll charges. IMD forecasts heavy rainfall in east, north and central India during the next five days. And England pacer James Anderson became the first fast bowler in history to take 600 test wickets. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. The government has made fast tag mandatory to allow users avail any discount at the highway toll plazas across the country. The decision has been taken to promote digital mode of payment and ensure seamless travel on the national highways. The Ministry of Road Transport and Highways amended the National Highways Fee Rules 2008 to allow discount for users making a return journey within 24 hours and other local exemptions only in cases where the vehicle carries a valid functional fast tag. The Ministry has also informed that the amendment would also enable automatic discount and no prior receipt or intimation will be necessary if return journeys are completed within 24 hours. In Maharashtra, the rescue operation of the ill-fated Tariq Garden building which collapsed on Monday in Mahat City in Raiga district concluded today. The rescue operation lasted for more than 40 hours. The death toll mounted to 16 with three more dead bodies being recovered from the rubble today. Nine others injured in the mishap have been hospitalized. According to the Raigad district collector Nidhi Chaudhary, the rescue operation was carried out as per the list of the occupants of the building and no one is found to be missing or trapped according to the list. In Assam, the core committee meeting of the state BJP is being held in Guwahati. Party's National General Secretary Organization BL Santosh is present in the meeting along with Chief Minister Sarban and Sonawal, State Party President Ranjit Kumar Das and NEDA convener Himanta Biswa Sarma. Party sources said that ahead of the next year's assembly polls, issues including election campaign, candidature, alliance are likely to be discussed. Later, Mr. Santosh will hold a meeting with the party's office bearers too. Karnataka Chief Minister B.S. Yediyurappa addressed a virtual Indo-Japan business forum from Bengaluru today. In his speech, the Chief Minister informed that the state has announced a 25% capital investment subsidy on land for industries. He said Karnataka tops innovation index in the country. The state has set up a Japanese industrial township near Tumkuru on 519 acres and an agreement is signed to promote Indo-Japan startups in the state. Speaking at another virtual meet with international partners on the proposed Bengaluru Tech Summit to be held in November, Mr. Dr. C. N. Ashwatha Narayan said that technology has helped prevent middlemen in reaching government benefits to the common man. He pointed out that technology has made it possible for the central and the state government to reach out to the distressed during the current pandemic. The Supreme Court asked the central government to clarify its position on the waiver of interest on outstanding loan payments for the period of the nationwide lockdown. Hearing on the plea, seeking interest waiver for a six-month moratorium on loans announced by the Reserve Bank of India, the Apex Court observed that the banking regulator's position will add to the confusion. It said the centre must clarify its position under the Disaster Management Act as it has got ample powers under it. The court said the government should not think about only business but also about the plight of the people. It added that the stand of the RBI so far is aligned with concerns of the industry and the government seems to be hiding behind the central bank. In our series on Atmanirbhar Bharat today, we bring you a special story on prospects of beekeeping for the farmers in the country. Government has rolled out several measures to promote beekeeping as part of its aim to double farmers' income. Under Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan, 500 crore rupees was allocated to the sector to enhance engagement of farmers in the sector of honey and wax production. India is among the world's top five honey producers and in a span of over a decade, honey production in the country has risen by 242% and export shot by 265%. The National Bee Board has also created four modules to impart training as per the National Beekeeping and Honey Mission and over 30 lakh farmers have been trained in beekeeping from across the country. Information and Broadcasting Minister Prakash Zavadekar greeted the entire women community on the occasion of Women's Equality Day today. In a tweet message, he paid tribute to their indomitable courage and reiterated the government's commitment to ensure respect, equality, security, equal participation and empowerment of women. 
Today is the birth anniversary of Mother Teresa. She was born Anze Gwanze Beziahu on 26th of August 1910 in Skopje. Mother Teresa arrived in India in 1929 and spent most of her life in service of the destitute in India. The Nobel laureate founded the Missionaries of Charity and spent 45 years serving the poor, sick, orphaned and dying on the streets of Kolkata. She died at the age of 87 in Kolkata in 1997. Mother Teresa was declared a saint on 4th of September 2016. Experts from India, Bangladesh, Nepal and Myanmar have come together for enhancing conservation of river dolphins in the region. River dolphins, a unique species found mainly in rivers of Asia and South America, are vanishing rapidly. Gangetic dolphin, the national aquatic animal of India, has been declared endangered by International Union for the Conservation of Nature (IUCN). Experts of these countries discuss the future strategy to conserve and revive these dolphins with regional cooperation. Experts were unanimous that announcement of project dolphin by Prime Minister Narendra Modi will work as a catalyst to increase dolphin population. Project Tiger has successfully helped in increasing tiger population. Indian skipper Virat Kohli has said that cricketers must not take any chance and keep themselves protected against the threat of COVID-19. He was addressing a virtual meeting of his teammates from Royal Challengers Bangalore in Dubai in the run up to IPL tournament. I would expect everyone to be on the same page in terms of securing the bubble at all times and making sure that nothing is compromised because I think one mistake from any of us could literally spoil the whole tournament and none of us want to do that. I can't wait to get to our first practice session. Something that we all are going to cherish an opportunity to create a good team culture from day one. The 13th edition of T20 Indian Premier League gets underway on the 19th of September in UAE. The matches will be held at three venues: Dubai, Sharjah, and Abu Dhabi, in the wake of COVID pandemic. England pacer James Anderson became the first fast bowler in history to take 600 Test wickets yesterday. The 38-year-old was seven wickets away from the feat when he started playing the third Test against Pakistan at the Ages Bowl. On day 5 of the match he dismissed Pakistan batsman Azhar Ali to claim his 600th wicket though the match ended in a draw England won the series 1-0 with its 3 wicket victory in the first test in Manchester followed by two drawn tests in Southampton Mutia Murlitharan with 800 Shane Warne with 708 and Anil Kumble with 619 wickets are the only other bowlers all spinners who remain ahead of Anderson on the all-time list of wicket takers Congratulations poured in for Anderson from all quarters including from Shane Warne, Anil Kumble and Indian skipper Virat Kohli. The 270 km Jammu Srinagar National Highway NHW44 remained closed for vehicular traffic for the second consecutive day today due to landslide and sinking of the national highway between Dalwas, Nashri and Pidha. AIR Jammu correspondent reports that the only all weather road connecting Kashmir Valley with the rest of the country was closed in the wee hours yesterday due to a massive landslide and sinking of the national highway at Dalwas. The national highway was damaged due to a massive landslide and sinking of about 50 meters stretch of the road at Dalwas due to heavy rainfall. Indian Med Department has forecast very heavy rainfall over east, north and central India during the next 5 days. IMD has also issued a red alert for Odisha for today and for Chhattisgarh tomorrow. It said a low pressure area, cyclonic circulation over North Bay of Bengal and its neighborhood is very likely to move west northwestwards during the period as it issued a red alert for Odisha and Chhattisgarh. In the national capital, IMD has issued an alert for moderate to heavy rain over the next 3 days and the Yamuna River is flowing precariously close to the warning mark in the city. It said Delhi NCR is very likely to experience one or two spells of moderate rain from today evening to Friday afternoon with heavy rainfall at isolated places tomorrow. The IMD said widespread rainfall with isolated heavy to very heavy rains are likely in Odisha, Gangetic West Bengal and Jharkhand till Friday and in Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh and West Rajasthan between today and Friday. Flood situation in North Bihar remains grim as most of the rivers continue to flow above the danger mark at different points in their courses. Flood water from Ganga continues to wreak havoc in low-lying areas of Patna, Munger, Bhagalpur and Khagaria. 26 teams of NDRF and SDRF have been pressed into relief and rescue operations. 
Five lakh fifty thousand people have been evacuated so far. Over five thousand people have taken shelter in relief camps. One hundred seventy-four community kitchen centers have been set up to provide food to the affected people. Over one lakh forty thousand people are taking food from these relief camps. The state government has instructed to intensify corona testing in relief camps and in those places where people are taking from community kitchens. Over eighty-three lakh sixty-five thousand people spread over one. 13,333 panchayats of 16 districts are reeling under the impact of floods. There is no let-up in flood condition in Saran and Gopalganj as surging water of Gandak has engulfed fresh areas. Meanwhile, the state government has sought reports of damaged school buildings in flood-affected districts. Ganga, Kosi, Bagmati, Kamla Balan and Gandak are flowing above danger mark. Med Department predicts heavy rainfall with thunderstorm in catchment areas of rivers in northern parts of the state in next 24 hours. The flood damage assessment team of the center is to hold a meeting with the various departments in Guwahati this evening. Official sources said that a six-member team will start field level assessment for two days from tomorrow. They will visit various flood affected districts. The source further said that half of the members of the team have already arrived in Guwahati while the rest of them will reach today afternoon. The three waves of floods affected lakhs of people this year in the state. The Assam government sent interim flood damage report to the center and has sought around 2300 crore rupees to compensate the flood damage. Flood water has also caused huge damages to the infrastructure including roads, bridges and embankments. Now let us take a look at the weather around the country. National capital Delhi is likely to experience thunderstorm with rain. Minimum temperature was a little above 27 degrees Celsius. Maximum is expected to be settling at around 34 degrees. For Mumbai there is a forecast of generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. Minimum temperature recorded was 26 degrees Celsius and the maximum is expected to be around 31 degrees. Chennai is having a generally cloudy sky with light rain today. Minimum temperature was recorded at 26 degrees Celsius and maximum is expected to be going up to 35 degrees. Kolkata forecast says generally cloudy sky with a few spells of rain or thunder showers. Minimum temperature was recorded at 26 degrees Celsius while the maximum will be around 33 degrees. In the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, Jammu has generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. Minimum temperature was 19 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be around 30 degrees Celsius. In Srinagar, the minimum temperature was 18 degrees, while the maximum will be around 28 degrees. The sky is generally cloudy with forecast of moderate rain. Ladakh is also having mainly clear sky with possibility of becoming partly cloudy towards afternoon or evening. The minimum temperature was recorded at 17 degrees and the maximum would be around 28 degrees Celsius. In Gilgit the temperature will be hovering between 22 and 34 degrees Celsius. It has generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. Muzaffarabad has generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. Minimum temperature was 19 degrees while the maximum temperature will be around 32 degrees Celsius. In Chandigarh there is generally cloudy sky with forecast of one or two spells of rains or thunder showers minimum temperature was 27 degrees celsius and the maximum would be around 33 degrees there are those experiencing generally cloudy sky with forecast of one or more spells of rain or thunder showers the temperature is expected to hover between 24 and 33 degrees celsius In Hyderabad the minimum temperature was touching 24 degrees while the maximum will be around 32 degrees Celsius. The city has generally cloudy sky with forecast of one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Guwahati also has generally cloudy sky it may have one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. The minimum temperature in the city was 26 degrees Celsius while the maximum will be around 36 degrees. Itanagar in the far east has generally cloudy sky with light rain. Minimum temperature was recorded at 25 degrees Celsius while the maximum will be 37 degrees. And now before we end the bulletin the headlines once again. COVID-19 recovery rate reaches 76.30%. Number of patients recovered 3 and a half times more than active cases in the country. G main and neat UG exams to be held as per schedule in September. Number of examination centers increased. Government makes use of fast tag mandatory for availing any discount in toll charges. IMD forecasts heavy rainfall in east, north and central India during next 5 days. And England pacer James Anderson became the first fast bowler in history to take 600 test wickets.
For details of these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.com and newsonair app. And with that, we end the midday news.